Okay guys, we now, now you can see we have our wort up to a boil. Now it's time to add the malt extract. The most important part about this step is that you need to make sure that you remove it from your heat source. The reason being is because if you for some reason happen to the extract sinks all the way to the bottom and scorches, well, it can actually cause your beer to be a little darker than you want it to. And it can also cause it to be a little sweeter. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn the fire off and we're gonna move it over here from the heat. Uh, this particular kit has liquid malt extract. It also comes in dry. Uh, I think it's a little easier to use liquid. Uh, that's what I prefer. It's a little less expensive as well. So this particular kit only has five pounds. Some kits will have more, some will have less. Uh, but this is where you're getting the majority of your sugar that your yeast is gonna consume and make alcohol and CO2. So what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna add this to, that, to, to, the, to the pot. Now, as you can see, this is a lot like molasses or um, maple syrup. Actually, it tastes really good if you want to put it on some ice cream or your pancakes. It tastes well, too. So. It is sticky and messy. The good news is it cleans up with, uh, with a little bit of hot water. So, uh, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add this uh, to, to the wart here. Okay, you want to stir it in real well, because the bottom of that pot is really still really hot, so we want to make sure that we don't scorch it. Really helps too if you have a, uh, another person to be able to help you out with this. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier to do, okay? Okay, so we've about got all of it done in here. Um, we still have a little bit more. Um, you don't have to get all of it out of there. I mean, it's a good idea to get as much as you can, uh, but you don't have to get every little last bit of sugar out of here. You can put some extra hot water in here to get the last little bit out of there. I usually don't bother with it too much. Um, that's not going to add or take away from your beer too much. So uh, rather than making a bigger mess, I just usually get what I can get out of there. Okay, now the next step is move it back over to the fire and we're going to bring it back up to a boil. Then according to whatever your, your uh, beer is, you're going to add some hops at different times during the boil. Uh, this is where you're going to get your bitterness, your flavor, as well as some of your uh, aromas as well. And we'll talk a little bit about that in future episodes. All right, we'll see you after the next step. Okay guys, we've got our pot up, just about ready to boil here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna check our brew day schedule. It's gonna tell us when we need to add our hops during the boil. This is a, a countdown from 60 to zero. A lot of recipes for the most part have a bittering hop as soon as it becomes up to a boil. Now the most important part is to make sure once you come up to a boil to watch your pot like a hawk. The reason being is that it was going to want to boil over on you. So what you want to do is make sure that when it comes up to a boil, make sure you get through that initial trying to boil over phase or foam up on you and, and then you want to add your hop addition and start your countdown. Okay. What this process is called is actually what's called hot break. So there's a bunch of proteins coming to the top and then what's just gonna happen is they're eventually gonna coagulate and fall back out of the pot. This particular beer here that we have, it doesn't actually have a bittering hop until 45 minutes. Uh, a lot of times you'll see some recipes that will actually have later hop additions instead of at 60 minutes. This may have to do with bitterness, smoother bitterness. Uh, this particular beer is probably so we could get a little smoother bitterness to go with this sweet stout. Okay guys, we've gotten to our first, our time for our first bittering hop, uh, which is gonna be at 45 minutes. Like I said, most of them are gonna be closer to 60 minutes or right after the initial boil starts. Uh, this particular recipe says 45 minutes, so that means 15 minutes after the boil begins. Okay, so the other thing that's important when you're adding hops uh, you might 
have to watch it. Uh, I pour mine just directly in there. Some people use hop socks. Uh, I, I just use mine and put them directly in. Uh, the thing that's going to be uh, you need to watch though is a lot of times your, your pot was going to want to boil over again uh, when you add hops. But uh, uh, this particular one did, did, did just fine, so we shouldn't have to worry about it too much. So uh, we have one more addition that's added at the last 15 minutes. According to whatever beer you're doing, they're all going to be different. So make sure you pay close attention to your recipe. So uh, once we get this, uh, we add our next hop addition, we're going to cool this down. We're going to actually use an ice bath to cool it down. Uh, one of the better ways to use it uh, to do it is also a wart chiller. Most people don't have those available. Uh, when they first start out, they use an ice bath to cool it down. The other thing that we're going to use too is uh, we're, we, I actually cooled some water. Uh, we have some bottled water that I have in the refrigerator and I'm going to add that back to the beer to actually try to cool it down too. It's really important that we cool this beer down as fast as possible once we're done. There's a lot of different reasons, but the main reason is, is bacteria likes warmer temperature. We're not brewing in a sterile environment. So we want to make sure that we cool it down as quickly as possible, get the yeast started in here. So if there is happen to be any bacteria, it'll make sure to, to take care of the yeast will take care of it. Okay. It's actually the alcohol and CO2, but anyway. Okay guys, we're about down to our last step on this particular recipe and it's actually adding some maltodextrin. What maltodextrin does is it adds a little body or mouthfeel to your beer. So if it's a heavier beer style, you might actually have this in your kit. Not every kit has this, but there are going to be a few that do. Make sure the most important part when you're doing your recipe, make sure you read your instructions and then read them a second time because every beer is a little bit different. Although the procedure is the same, there may be different hop additions, different sugars additions and, and such. Okay, so with that, we're, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to uh, add our maltodextrin and our lactose. This particular beer has lactose in it. What lactose is, is it's a milk sugar, of course, and that's what gives it the little sweetness to your beer. So we're gonna add those now. Okay, we're adding the maltodextrin. We add this in the last five minutes of this particular beer, because we don't necessarily need to be cooked. It just needs to add, just to make sure that it's sterilized. And that's one of the things we're gonna talk about next. As soon as we get this beer done and we start chilling it, we're gonna talk about sanitation because it is one of the most important parts of brewing and we always save that for last so it'll be fresh on your mind. Okay, we've got the maltodextrin stirred in. Now we're going to stir the lactose in. If you taste lactose, it's not really, really overly sweet. It's not like sugar sweet. So it's not going to add a whole lot of really super sweet flavors to your beer. Okay, guys, we're going to let this boil for about another five more minutes. And then we're going to start our chilling process. All right, we'll see you at the next step. Okay, guys. Now that we've done all of our hop additions, we're going to finish out our boil and then we're going to cool it down. Cooling is very important for beer and there's a lot of different reasons, but the main reason is, is that bacteria likes to work at 100 or so degrees temperature. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get it down as close as we can to 75 to 80 degrees. The cooler the better, of course, so we can get our yeast started in here. And what that does is that starts to produce alcohol and CO2. So if there happens to be any kind of bacteria, it'll surely take care of it at that point. Okay. Other thing is, is that your clarity, uh, it's not really effect on your temperature or on your quality of your beer or the flavor, but it can have uh, a haziness to your beer if you don't cool it down quickly. Okay. So what we've done is we're actually brewing about four gallons of beer. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of gallons of water back to this 
to actually cool it down. But before that, we're actually going to use an ice bath to actually try to cool this particular uh, amount of wort before we add the cold water back to it. And the reason being is because if I just go in here and add a couple gallons to get to five gallons to cool it off, we're going to have five gallons of 120 degree wort. So it's really important for you to go ahead and cool this off first and then add your cold water to get you down to around 75 degrees, which is about optimum pitching temperature. Okay. So there's other ways of actually chilling as well. Uh, one of that ways is actually something called a wart chiller or immersion chiller. That's what most people start out with. It's not necessary to brew your first batch, but that's something that most people add over time. What it does is it actually, you put it inside of the wart, run it through your, the water runs through it. And this works as a little small heat exchanger and it actually removes the heat. You can use it on a water hose or we have adapters as well that you can use to put on your sink. Okay guys, well, after this, we're gonna get back to our chilling and we'll show you how that's done. Thanks. Okay guys, now that we have our pot uh, in the sink, we're gonna start up our ice bath and start to cool this beer down. You can also use a cooler for this if you'd rather use an ice, uh, igloo cooler or something of that nature. That works as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add some water to it, fill it up. Ice water actually will help it, although we're melting a lot of it. Uh, you have more surface area when you have ice water. So. Now the next thing we're gonna talk about is sanitation and how important it is. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna start sanitizing our equipment. Nothing has to be really sanitized as far as your pot's concerned, but when it comes to once your beer starts to cool down, it's very, very important that everything touches your beer at that point has to be sanitized. Now there is a difference between sanitization and cleaning. Just keep this in mind. You can't sanitize dirt or organic material. So it's very important to remove any kind of dirt. That's what we use the PBW for. In sanitation, we use something called star sand. This is a non-rent sanitizer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix some of that up here in a few seconds in our primary fermenter. Primary fermenter is included in your equipment kit and we'll talk about that just here in a few minutes. Okay guys, while we're letting our wart chill down uh, to our pitching temperature, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our equipment. Most of it we're gonna use later on. Uh, the one thing that we're gonna to use today is we're actually gonna use the primary fermenter that's included in your kit. This is the one without the hole in the bottom. Uh, the one with the hole in, or actually the bottom of the side here, uh, you can see here, is actually used for our bottling. And we'll see that later on in our next episode about bottling and secondary fermentation. Okay, so you'll see here, it says five gallons of wort. We're gonna add our wort once it cools down to about 110, 120 degrees into here. Then we're gonna add our cold water at that point to get five gallons. Now this is just an approximation. On the bucket, it's not exactly 100% accurate just due to manufacturing processes, but it's a pretty good, pretty good ballpark. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna get this all sanitized up because anything and everything that touches your wort once it cools down, has to go through sanitizer. And how are we gonna sanitize? We're gonna use something called star sand. This is what's included in your kit. You use one ounce per five gallons, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my fermenter all the way up to five gallons. Uh, and then I'm gonna add an ounce of this. We're gonna let that have about a 30 second contact time. And then we're going to pour it out and then we're gonna fill it back up with our beer. Now, 
It's really important. A lot of people really get upset about the foam. Star sand is extremely foamy. That's part of the cleaning and, and sanitation action. Okay, so don't fear the foam. Don't rinse it out because if you rinse it out, you've just undone what you just did. So make sure that uh, you don't sweat it too much about the foam. Okay, so you'll see it here in just a second. We may have a little bit of foam left over. It's usually especially bad in your carboy, but uh, like I said, don't sweat it. The yeast will actually consume it as a nutrient. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna use this, this bucket here. We're also gonna have a lid and an airlock. So let's get this stuff sanitized and then we're gonna add our beer to it. <laughs> 